All right, we are recording. Hi guys, welcome to our Seriously Prep Like a Boss. Like we're gonna talk about meal planning, all that good stuff. Kate and I are really excited to share with you guys tonight. We are gonna be doing kind of a slideshow and kind of walk you through um, what we have kind of learned over the number of years that we've been coaching on how kind of our best practices on how to meal plan and prep and really get the best um, use of our time and different things along those lines. So I'm gonna hand it over to Kate. She's gonna bring up the slide and share her screen. Hi guys, I'm Kate and Sunil and I have been like, I mean, like she said, doing this for a while and it's crazy how sometimes, I'm just gonna, you'll see some of this, how sometimes you, as you get going, you forget about where you started. And I mean, I was the type of person, I had no idea what clean eating was. I remember Googling it. Like I literally just went to the grocery store and I don't know, hoped I would pick healthy things. I don't know. I was like the jello, like I bought a ton of sugar-free jello. Did anybody else do that? It was like so bad. That was like the 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 fat-free cool whip. Yeah. That craze. Um, but that's when I like really started to realize that that wasn't healthy and that I needed a plan because we were also just wasting so much money on going to the grocery store mindlessly. So, um, hopefully, Hopefully some of this stuff isn't new to you. Does this, okay, there it goes. Um, and you know a little bit, but we, we really think you're going to get some good golden nuggets um, from this. And the goal when you go through this is to not think, I have to do all of this right away, but just to take pieces of this and say, this is what I'm going to implement this week. And then next week I will do this. So take notes if you can. Otherwise, we will have a recording of this. If for some reason you want like a copy of the slides, like let us know and we'll each individually send those out to you. So anyways, let's kick it off. Um, Our meal planning and prep workshop. We would love if you would follow us on Instagram as well as the coach that invited you to this. This is for our entire team. Um, And there are so many amazing women on our team. Um, So be sure that you're following them and if you want to follow us, we also share a lot of really good tips on nutrition and planning in our Instagram stories um, and feeds. Okay, so this is kind of what we're going to cover this evening and what to expect. We're going to start out with like how to create a routine, then we're going to talk about prepping. Um, we're going to go over, Sindel's like awesome at going over budget-friendly tips, hubby and kid approved tips. She has four kids. Um, and I would think that Kyle, I mean, you know him, but like, he's like meat and potatoes, like farm guy, right? Like that's how my dad is. Like, yeah. (laughs) So, I mean, I like, I'm always amazed by her like tricks and tips, especially with kids, um, how to keep it healthy. We will be sending out via email, some free resources to you that you'll see in this training and then we have a giveaway so you have to stay on till the end of the call in order to know how to be put into the drawing for the giveaway um and it well i'm not even gonna tell well should i say what it is because i think it's a really good gift yeah. it's a tub of our go-go juice the energize which is like gold. If you haven't ever had it, I use it to clean my house. I use it before I work out. I use it when it's like five o'clock and my kids are driving me crazy. And I'm like, I just can't do this. And Katie's it just popping like, hers up. Katie's <laughs> like, mine's right here. <laughs> like, I mean, I don't have it like multiple times a day, but like, I mean, sometimes I do. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> um, that's what we're going to cover. Really awesome giveaway. Um, but, oh, I think I went too far. So we're going to go creating a routine. So as we go through this workshop, I really want you to get the concept of Friday, Saturday, Sunday, there's a little bit of something to do each day. And when you do divide out your meal planning and prep over the course of three days, as opposed to all on Sunday, you're going to have this weight lifted and it's not going to be as daunting to you. So 
a lot of people, a lot of the hesitations that I get from my clients are that I just don't have the time to prep. Like I just don't have the time. And I'm like, that is, I think BS, you just have to plan. Um, and I'm starting to come at it with a little bit of tough love because if you don't plan, we all know the quote, you're going to fail, right? You plan, fail to plan, plan, how does that go so well? Fail to plan, <laughs> whatever. And if you plan, fail to plan, you're gonna fail, right? If you fail to, whatever, you know that one, but. <laughs> The, the point. You can either fail to plan or plan to fail. Fail. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's a tongue twister. Uh, <laughs> um, it's just so true. So the first thing you can do is create a routine and that starts on Friday and you're going to plan. That is when we really encourage you to plan. And not every week's going to be perfect or every weekend's going to be perfect, but you do your best. So on Friday, you're going to look at your calendar and I'll show you kind of what mine looks like in the next slide. Who are you cooking for? You need to know the who, the when, the where. Sometimes it's a why, if it's like a Thanksgiving dinner, like why, so you have to have all of the fixings, whatever. Um, and then the when obviously is during the week. So who are you cooking for? Is it gonna be yourself, your husband, toddler, baby, guests? Um, are you having a play group that you need to have stuff for, right? And then the when, what days of the week, eating at home, dinners out, lunch dates that you have, like you need to put on the calendar exactly what you have going on. And a lot of times as women, I don't know about men, but we think we can like keep it all up here. And after having kids, I've come to realize like, I just can't, I have to write it down or I forget, um, or have it in a planner of some kind, right? Because that is going to save you one, a lot of money because if I don't need to cook for my husband on Wednesday, I don't need to cook, like have a whole meal and buy all the ingredients for it, right? Because otherwise I can really like, I don't need a, a ton of like fancy things um, from on my dinner plate. And then if you're traveling, right? And then the where, where will you be for each of your meals? If you're going to be at home, your meal's gonna look a lot different than you're going than if you're going to be on the road. Or if you're at a restaurant, you obviously don't need to buy for that meal. Um, so think about where it's going to be. And so when I, I first pull out my calendar, um, this is what it looks like. Um, and I put in kind of like what's going on. So usually on Sunday, I have brunch after church and I don't need to cook, right? Monday I have a work day, so like in the morning, my breakfast, I always go to the same place and I usually always get the same thing. Um, and then Brennan's gonna be traveling on Tuesday. I have a mops breakfast on Wednesday, so I don't have to cook for myself then. And then we usually have a date night on Saturday nights. <clears throat> so I put those in the calendar. Then I start to plan and pick the meals. This is still on Friday, so that didn't take very long. That took me, what? 60 seconds to figure out what's going on each day. Um, the tips that I have for you when you're picking your meals, the less complicated, the less stress. And when people are on their wellness journey, sometimes they think they need to be so complicated with their meals. And if you look at people who are fit, healthy, um, a lot of them will tell you that they eat a lot of the same things every, you know, every day or on each day of the week. Like they don't make it complicated that's just like an indicator, right? Success leaves clues. You don't, unless you're like somebody who has a ton of time to cook and you enjoy it, like don't add that stress because it's harder to stick to it when it's stress. Um, create a go-to dinner list. This is like for me because another place that I always think I can keep everything is in my head and it's one thing I can't keep in my head. I, especially after, <laughs> So when I was pregnant, I was healthy, but I wasn't as healthy, right? And afterwards, I was like, okay, I got to go back to like making like the dinners that like really are going to fuel me, especially when I'm not breastfeeding. Like I'm usually trying to not have as many carbs at dinner time, whatever. So I, I like, I don't even have a go-to dinner list. Like what was I making before? I don't even know. And it, like, it's easy for our brains to just forget that because we're holding so many other things. So create a go-to dinner list, the meals you know your husband likes or whoever you're cooking for likes, your kids like, 
you like. So when you make something good, save the recipe or at least save the name of it on a specific list um, and keep that on your phone. If you do bullet journaling on one of your bullet journaling pages, things like that. Shakeology makes it so easy if you haven't tried it. Um, a lot of people like give hesitations about the cost. But if you calculate out what you're spending on something else, like if you stop at Starbucks or even, I mean, when you're making your own breakfast, depending on what you're making, like it's the same or less. So think about the convenience of that. You know it's the healthiest meal of the day. And I mean, if you're not familiar with Shakeology, I think we share a little bit more on that at the end, but it is a game changer. Um, and then if you are, if you are familiar with the ultimate portion fix, so like I know that some of like our clients are on here and you're brand new and you're doing the ultimate portion fix. This was also mind blowing for me was using the same containers at each meal. So throughout the week, every breakfast, I had these containers, every snack, I had these containers because otherwise it was like so complicated for me. And maybe I'm just like, that's just not like one of my specialties. It's like picking all of these containers and putting together a puzzle. Um, a lot of people like doing that, not me. So I like to do the same um, containers at every single meal. And then it's easy to move them around once you have them in the spot. If you decide you want to like have your blue container at breakfast and set up your snack that day, it's easy to move it as opposed to like trying to just fit all the pieces together. It takes way less time. Okay. Then, did I miss page? Yes. Okay. So here is an example of a filled out meal plan. And when I first look at it, even right now, I'm like, whoa. But if you look closely, it's pretty simple. Um, I always start with breakfast because there are certain things I always eat at breakfast. Um, and usually it is two eggs with spinach and tomato with toast and peanut butter on top. Unless I'm doing some specific meal plan, like right now I'm doing carb cycling or when I was doing the ultimate portion fix, these are the things I stuck to, unless like Shakeology on Friday, because it was easy, right? So, which you'll see on here, <clears throat> I always fill in the breakfast because I know what I like to eat for breakfast and that makes it easy, right? I fill that in. I'm not a complicated person. I know that I'm going to be out. Remember, I had that work day here in pink. They, that's why these are pink because they were from other, my other like planning. So I put in what I was going to have there instead of going out to eat and mindlessly like picking something. I picked out what I was going to have before at mops. They always serve um, hard boiled eggs and fruits. So I put that on my meal plan, but then I just filled in these other days on Friday and Saturday. I usually have my shake in the morning because sometimes I miss it in the afternoon or Saturday, I should say that because it's a weekend um, and it's easy. So I just switched it around that day to mix it up. Then if you look at Sunday, um, my lunch, I put brunch after church, that is TBD because like we have to look and see where we're gonna go, but I will fill that in later. So it's not gonna be perfect once I we know where we're gonna go for brunch. But usually I pick an egg dish, you know, because it's usually like brunch. Um, or salad. Then if you look at dinner, I'm doing steak with roasted veggies and a sweet potato. Brennan prefers a regular potato. So I always put that in there so that I remember and know how many to buy. Um, but you're going to see as we go throughout the week that these meals are strategically placed on Sunday. So my breakfast of the two eggs, spinach and tomato with toast and PB, I put below here prep for next week. So when I'm prepping, when I'm making my breakfast on Sunday morning, I have a little bit more time. I'm actually cooking out my breakfast for Tuesday and Thursday and putting them in my containers and putting them in the fridge. So that took me no time because I just was cooking what I had already cooked on Sunday. And that's why like there are a lot of benefits to eating at home. Number one, you like know what you're putting in your food. And number two, you can mass like produce. And especially on the weekend when maybe you have extra hands with your kids, um, you can just add 
to the current meal you're making for the next week. So then if you look at Sunday, those roasted vegetables that I am serving with the steak, I'm just making a ton of extra roasted vegetables so that I can use them the next week. So at my lunch on Monday, I have roasted vegetables. At my lunch on Wednesday, I have roasted vegetables and like so on and so forth. I, I cook those with my meals. So that prep is like not really prep, right? Because I'm cooking it for dinner. Then um, the other thing that I highlighted in pink, like so you can see for my lunches, I have, sorry, I'm going to go back up here. Chicken, roasted veggies, sweet potato, right? That's the same thing, like the sweet potatoes. I also baked them on Sunday night toss them in all at the same time. I'm switching it up because I'm having chicken and sometimes I like just mix them different ways or put different seasonings on them. Um, but I'm having that for Monday and Wednesday. And then I also, on Tuesday and Thursday and Friday, I'm having chicken burrito bowls. And why am I having chicken burrito bowls? Because that's what my dinner is going to be on Monday night. So I just make extra. So there goes all my lunches. My lunches are done, right? I I guess I probably needed to roast some chicken, which you'll see in the next slides, for my chicken fajita bowl, or for my chicken on Monday and Wednesday um, lunches. But it's like just being smart about where you place your meals. And then the last thing that I highlighted over here, um, just to kind of give you some tips. So you can eat healthy with your spouse or kids when they don't like what you're gonna eat. You just have to like, make it a little bit different for yourself and Simba covers this but like I'm having spaghetti squash for myself and regular spaghetti for my family. I love spaghetti and I love spaghetti squash so it feels like I'm eating spaghetti with everybody else and honestly I really just love like the red sauce so it's it wins. It's a win-win for everybody. Everybody loves spaghetti in our family and I can eat healthy and have my spaghetti. Um, and then let me just see, I'm covering up this with my video. Um, the other thing that's in pink over here is I put in, like, it is, it is, unless, I mean, I know in small towns, like, sometimes it's hard to find healthy options. That is true. But in most places, even in smaller, like, towns where there might not be as many options, you can find a veggie and a protein option for dinner. So I try to keep it healthy when I eat out because otherwise those things are loaded with like blah. Um, and then my snacks, easy, fill them in. I usually always know they're going to be my shake or it's carrots and hummus or like broccoli, whatever veggies I had left over from my roasted veggies. Um, you'll also see that on Saturday um, we do leftovers, not a lot, but a lot with my husband. So for lunch. And then I also put in my workouts. Um, if you don't know, I'm going to just run back. We have a brand new program that's launching. It's 10 rounds. It's kickboxing. Um, and this upcoming Monday is the sample workout. So if you want to try it, it's free. Let us know. But it's going to be so much fun. I'll just send the workout out to everybody that's on the list too. Um, anyways, so Saturday you're going to shop. This is a little bit like faster to go through. But um, tips for shopping. Go on Saturday. Or if you are like awesome, go on Friday, but then your stuff will keep a little bit longer if you wait till Saturday. Um, and then when you are like shopping on Saturday, that is when I usually buy my stuff for my Sunday meal. So I don't buy for my Sunday meals. Um, so that way I have it for the next week, if that makes sense, even though my plan starts on Sunday. Um, create a master grocery shopping list. This is key, especially like when you're sending your spouse out, like I usually always buy the same things. Um, unless I'm getting creative with new recipes, it's pretty consistent, the things that I buy. And I'll give you a sample of that on the next page, but it just makes it easy when you're planning out your list. Um, it makes it less daunting. Just have that master list and then you add the extra things below it. So add the extras and go shopping. So my always list, um, and I probably could add a few more things on here, but um, the always, always are almond milk, eggs. I usually use about 18. I use a lot of eggs. I love hummus. We have bananas a lot in our house. So a lot of bananas, baby spinach, cherry tomatoes, Persian cucumbers, 
um, <laughs> veggie platter and fruit platter. And I say that with kind of a laugh because it is way cheaper to like buy the veggies and they're usually fresher when you buy your veggies and cup them. But I know myself. Um, and so it is worth the money for me to buy the platter because otherwise it goes to waste because I really struggle with like cutting it up right away. Um, and it just saves time for me now. Uh, so if I'm feeling ambitious, I'll buy it. But like, don't feel bad about buying the, the platters. And I know they're usually an extra cost, but how much goes to waste when you do, if you do struggle with actually using it, when you buy it and you have all of these good intentions of eating it, but then you're like, it's like in my fridge and it's, oops, sorry, this, I need to like update this. Um, and it's like rotting in there because you just don't want to chop it up. Like just be okay with that. It's okay. Um, sparkling water. I love sparkling water. So with my husband, whole wheat bread, chicken breast, ground beef, um, and ground turkey. Okay. So prep, this is where you really get into working. Um, and because you've done the planning, it doesn't take that much time. You have to decide in advance what you're going to make in advance. Decide what you can make 100% in advance. So for me, if you remember my meal plan, I can make my breakfast 100% in advance. Almost all of my lunches, except for that one lunch that was Monday night's dinner. And I don't need to make that because I'm making it Monday night. Snacks are easy to make. Um, what can you put in your grab and go containers so that like it's easy to go? So if you know you're on the road or going to work or when I had a brand new baby, I was home, but like, it was so nice to pull out that lunch container because I didn't know when I was going to get to eat. And I'm so thankful that like I made those in advance. So grab and go is helpful. Prep dinner ingredients. Um, so for me specifically, I do more prep of my um, breakfast and lunch and snacks. And then dinners, I do a little bit of prep. And then I like to make it feel fresh. Some people are okay with making it in advance. I'm just not, and I do the, a few extra steps to make it feel a little bit more like just made. Um, but you can even pre-bake some of your ingredients, like the sweet potatoes, um, chicken, all of that. Um, chopping your veggies and portioning out your meats. This with like chicken um, is something that I found really helpful. Like instead of having the chicken breast in the con in the fridge. Um, all in the package. I don't like touching it. So if I just do it once and divide it up for the meals, like this is for the fajitas and I sliced it up and made it ready to go. And I did it all on Sunday. It just was like less, it felt like dinner was less work, even though it was still being cooked that night, it was prepped and I didn't have to like touch it every single time. Well, chicken is gross. Um, so you can see here, just like I said, breakfast, I can prep the eggs with spinach and tomato. Um, and that I did on Sunday. So check, done. I did that at my breakfast on Sunday. The lunches, I can bake chicken, right? That's easy. I can even put it in the oven at the same time that I'm roasting the veggies for um, dinner on Sunday and the sweet potatoes. So check, check. That's just being done during my dinner. That was easy. Um, and then for dinners, I could pre-cook or pre-make the chili. Um, and one thing that even with chili that's super helpful is just pre-cook the meat because that's usually what like makes it feel like it's hard work because you have to do your meat, take it out, then cook the other stuff. But if you pre-cook the meat, then it's just like dumping it in, right? And like chopping up your vegetables, um, separating out the meat, chopping your fajita veggies, um, cutting the chicken for your fajita meat. That's what I like to do. And then veggie snack bags. And that's pretty much all that I'm going to prep. And honestly, because most of it is done during my breakfast and my dinner, I bet this will only take me like an hour of prep. And then I'm ready for the week. Okay, so these are some of our favorite tools. Um, these bento meal prep containers, I love them. I encourage when you use them to put the veggies in the big container because if you follow like our to be mindset concept, like veggies most is like key. Um, so that is how I kind of divide it up. I put like my vegetables in one container, 
my chicken. And then if I have a carb at that meal, I put the carb in there. Or you could put like your condiments in there if it was like a salad or something like that. Um, I love glass containers. I feel like especially with like egg dishes and things like that, it just stays fresh better for me. Um, and when I put it in the microwave, it it's obviously healthier to use glass containers. But if I'm going to put it in the microwave, especially with like the egg dishes, I just feel like it reheats better. Um, the veggie and food choppers are super slick for like cutting up onions, which if I like me, it makes it super easy. Um, a spiralizer is really good if you love like um, zucchini noodles. So that's another alternative to like the spaghetti squash. Um, but that's one of my favorite things. And you can use it for um, sweet potatoes, carrots, all kinds of stuff that you don't often think of. Um, Instapot, thank you, Sindel, for bringing that back into my life. I owned one and then never used it. And it's so easy to just like cook the basics and you don't have to use your Instapot just for like meals, but for cooking chicken and your vegetables. Um, it's an awesome resource. And then I use, I use a lot of Ziploc or there's reusable baggies. I haven't gotten on a Van Wagen. I probably should because it's way better. Um, but I just use a lot of Ziplocs for portioning things out. And now I'm going to hand it over to Zindel. Thank you, Kate. Uh, aren't those great tips, you guys? Like, did you like how she broke it down into how she really plans out her week? I've learned so much from her in just like, oh, it makes sense. Like, make bigger portions, plan out your stuff. And you guys, the Instapot is seriously my best friend. I, if my husband likes to make fun of me, there's a lot of days, you guys, that I use it more than one time during the day. I love this. I make soups in it. I do all my chickens, like everything in it. I love it. So I'm going to dive into some budget friendly tips for you guys. Um, like Kate said, I am a mama of four. Um, and we're in the Midwest where my hubby likes, you know, meat and potatoes. Like his idea of a meal is like steak and that's it. So anytime he's cooking, I'm like, and what are we having for vegetables? <laughs> like we always have to like go through this conversation, but thankfully he's getting a lot better. So here is how you can keep healthy eating into a budget friendly situation, which obviously we want all of this because I think like the biggest pushback, a lot of times when we say, what are you doing to eat healthy? People are always like, it's too expensive to eat healthy. Oh my gosh. No, it is not. <laughs> First off, pick your seasonal things. Okay. Your fruits, your vegetables make them seasonal. Don't feel like you're going to switch things up and you're going to do all this healthy eating. And you're like, I'm just going to pick recipes that are awesome. And then you're like using papaya and mangoes and like all these random things that you're like, you don't normally maybe use them, but they're also out of season. So make sure you're using the things that are in season and make sure your meal plan is planned according to that. Don't feel like you need to just go, Oh, this healthy recipe looks good. So I'm going to do it make sure it's going to be budget friendly for you as well. Use what's on hand. Okay. When you are going through your meal plan, seriously, when I like sit down to do mine, I first take an inventory of what I have on hand, because if I have a roast that's in the freezer that I'm like, I better get that used up. I want to use that roast or whatever it is. So make sure you go through all your pantry, through the freezer, through everything and see what you have on hand, especially if it's like maybe a week where you're like, Oh, I really like to extend that budget. Use what's up, what's on hand right away. And don't make three meals for your family. Seriously. Like Kate gave you some really good tips on just like switching it up a little bit, but don't feel like you need to be like, you're having this and you're having this and this and this and this. You are not a short order cook. Okay. If that is how your family treats you right now, nix it in the bum. Like right now, seriously, you do not need that. And, and I'm sorry, that would drive me crazy. So like, let's not do that use up leftovers. You guys, I was so anti leftovers for the longest time. And if you don't know this, this is something I recently discovered probably within the last month. We have a sensor heat on our microwave. Oh my gosh, you guys, it reheats things so much better than being like, let's put in 20 seconds. And you know, it, it's just, it's crazy. So if you haven't used that, 
feature, use that feature. It's truly the simple things in life, right? guys? <laughs> the things that I did not realize, but you guys, it heats up leftovers so much better, especially meats. Um, I would say meats are probably the big one that I hear from my clients when they're in a boot camp and they're like, okay, that's awesome that you're doing this meal planning. I can't reheat chicken like you because I'm like, I get it. It gets rubbery, right? Um, so leftovers reheating using the sensor heat, I have noticed works significantly better than just reheating in the microwave, but also you can throw it into the oven. It's already cooked. It's really nice. Preheat your oven at 250, put it in a pan, let it sit in there for 10 minutes. You guys, it's almost like it is fresh. So leftovers are awesome. And that kind of really ties into really this next little tip here, recreate things, use those leftovers to recreate. And probably the tip that I always give, or like the example I always give, because we like a lot of soups, you guys, I recreate into some soup all the time. Like my husband also jokes that like, he is a much better cook than me. Like, let's just be really honest here. Like he is significantly better and more creative in the kitchen than I am, but I can make a mean soup. Like you say, Hey, I want soup. I'm like, I don't care what I have. I can make a good soup. <laughs> that is like the one thing that I can do much better than him. But we make a lot of things into soup. So if I'm like, Hey, we have all these vegetables to use up everything goes into the soup and I add a protein into it. Um, but like if you have chicken left over or maybe you have taco meat, you can easily make those into new things, you guys. So recreate things, use up those extra veggies. And you guys, seriously, if you are not buying in bulk right now, even if you have a family of two, you can still save a significant amount of money by buying in bulk. For example, we went to Costco and oh my God, I don't even want to tell you how much money we spent at Costco, but I have our freezer stock for probably about the next month. And part of that was I bought huge bags of broccoli, for example, and I left one big bag in the fridge and the other two bags went into our freezer. You guys, those type of things, freeze them, use them up, especially if they're on sale. And that's why I bought so much stuff at Costco because they were having an awesome sale on their, on the produce that I, we, we use a lot. So asparagus, green beans freeze really well. Like you guys, almost any vegetable really freezes well. And you can use those things, um, right out of the freezer. I think that was something I failed at over and over again, which is partially why, you know, I like to claim that I'm really not that good cook, but I've gotten better. But I used to take things out of the freezer and think, oh, this broccoli needs to thaw out before I cook it. No, it does not, you guys. Like, this is a time-saving thing. Throw it right onto a pan, drizzle some olive oil and some seasoning on it, throw it in the oven frozen, and it will taste way better. It will taste like it was fresh instead of getting mushy and gross. So go ahead and you can do that with asparagus, cauliflower, any of those type of things. Like, it really does work well. And to save you time, cook in bulk. Kate gave some awesome examples of what she's doing. When she's prepping her breakfast on Sunday, she's prepping it for the rest of the week cook in bulk. And if you're doing maybe something like, um, we do a lot of like steel cut oats. My kids love oatmeal for breakfast. So if I'm doing like steel cut oats, I don't just make four servings because my kids, I have four kiddos. I am making a lot of times 16 servings. And if we are going to be gone for like, say a weekend or whatever, or we decide last minute, Hey, we're not going to be home. And I have all this oatmeal, you know, in the fridge, we just put it in a Ziploc bag and throw it in the freezer. You guys freeze those things. And then I just take it out the next week when we're ready to eat it. Um, and don't fear frozen things. Like this is probably the best budget friendly tip you guys, because frozen veggies and frozen fruits are significantly cheaper than fresh produce, especially if it's the off season time of year, right? Like we are kind of, we're heading into the springtime, but we're not quite there. And that, those prices are still pretty high. You guys, they are just as nutritious. Just make sure you're really reading your ingredients list because you don't want to have the stuff that's like added seasoning of X, Y, or Z, and you don't even know what all is added to it or if they've added preservatives or whatever. Just make sure it says the vegetable and that's it on it. All right. Now kid friendly and husband friendly is what we kind of joke about a lot. Like we already said, I have a Midwest hubby who likes steak and his potatoes, um, but he's really adapted well. And I think one of the, the better things to think about when you start embarking on this healthy eating journey is you don't have to force your family to eat exactly the way that you're wanting to eat as you're going through this process. It's okay to kind of let them slowly wean in. Um, I know when I jumped into this, I was like, everybody has to do exactly this. And I'm kind of an all or nothing person. Like that's just kind of my natural personality. And I do remember like standing in my kitchen at one point and just being like, 
I have nothing to feed my kids. Like all these things are really not that healthy and I have nothing to feed them. And really like, it wasn't that big of a deal. It was okay that they ate, yeah, I don't know, the tater tots that were in the fridge. <laughs> it was all right. They can still eat those things. Go through that stuff, get rid of, you know, kind of slowly wean the things out of your house, choose the things that maybe you don't want to bring back in and stop buying them, but use those things up. Don't feel like this has to be like, all of a sudden everybody has to change. Okay. And trust me, your family will be thankful for it too. Okay. They're not going to be resentful for all of a sudden mom wants us to eat healthy. Right. So you can do a few things though, to kind of just move them forward in this process. You can dissect your meal down. We said, you know, we don't want you making three meals, but like Kate mentioned, her hubby likes a regular potato over a sweet potato. So she knows that she throws those different things in. So if you have a child that really, really despises X, Y, or Z, you know, maybe add an extra portion of something else that you know they love. I have two that absolutely love broccoli and I have two that absolutely love cauliflower. So we do a bunch of both, but I also know each one is going to get a different amount because of what they like. So kind of dissect those things into what people prefer. Um, they'll be happier happier that you did that for them. Um, and then let your kids serve themselves. You guys like truly my kids do better when, when they are allowed to serve themselves. Usually I'm always telling them you got to take more greens, but they do better when they get to choose what exactly they're putting on their plates. And a lot of times, even if they take a little bit of a certain veggie or whatever, they'll sometimes go back for that second serving because they're allowed to have that, that freedom, so to speak for it. Because I mean, hello, who doesn't like to have a little bit of freedom over what's going on their plate? Fruits and veggies, you guys have ample fruits and veggies. Kate gave a great tip with like, truly do not feel bad. If you are like, I have zero time to cut up veggies and fruit, buy the dang platters. <laughs> At least those are getting, you know, in front of your kids and set them out, set them out as like an alternative. Um, my son, all of a sudden, my, my seven-year-old has decided that he doesn't like cooked vegetables. He likes raw vegetables. And I really battled him on it actually over these last couple of weeks. I'm like, buddy, <laughs> you, and he's kind of my one that like, he really tries to be picky. I'm like, if you like this stuff, knock it off. But he is just like, mom, I don't want it. And so I'm like, okay, why am I fighting this? This is really silly. So I have been like leaving raw vegetables out for him. And instead of him taking the roasted veggies that we've been having at supper, he's been taking the raw veggies. And I'm like, okay, does it really matter to me which way he eats it? If he prefers it that way, you guys, this has helped so much. Like truly, I'm like, what is wrong with me? Why am I fighting, fighting him on this when really it's just having that extra alternative that's still a healthy option, but it's an alternative for him. And he gets to choose a little bit more, um, that kind of freedom things both so to speak and include your family you guys when you're putting together that go-to recipe or that go-to meal plan um or the go-to dinner list excuse me that's the word i'm looking for that kate was mentioning you know having your dinner list ask your family what do they like what do they love and then you know pick those options that you're like hey these are really good ones that i know i can easily rotate in um they will feel so much more part of this process instead of feeling like it's just your thing that you're taking over and making them eat this stuff okay and then this last tip you guys this is something we implemented in my house when my, my second, my seven-year-old who he, like I said, he likes to be the pickier eater. We implemented it probably when he was like three years old, I would bet, like maybe, maybe almost three, two and a half, three. And he would be like, nope, I don't like that. I mean, who, who doesn't have the kid that all of a sudden they like boycott something and you're like, you've liked this forever. What do you mean? So we implemented what we call the three bite rule. They have to take three bites of whatever it is on their plate. And typically by the time they get to bite three, you guys, they forget that they told you they didn't like it and they usually just eat all of it. So that is a rule, no matter what is on your plate. And sometimes my kids will bulk at it, but I'm always like three bites, you gotta take three bites. And sometimes they'll try nibbling and I'm like, nope, it's better be three bites or it's gonna be six. And I sound like a horrible mean mom, you guys right now, but it works, it works. And it just, it's one of those things that it kind of keeps your kids from being pickier than, than what they really wanna be, so to speak. <laughs> All right, so now let's chat healthy eating tips. Now, these you guys, this is like a composite of lists that Kate and I have learned over the last couple of years. We have, we are both certified with um, the Ultimate Portion Fix and To Be Mindset. These are both nutrition programs that they are so full of good education, you guys. <laughs> so these are the tips that we have really implemented in making making sure that our, not only us, but our family is really trying to push with these things. Water first, 
we all need water, right? Water is essential for life. Let your veggies truly be your main ingredient. Don't, don't be like my husband who would just eat a steak and be okay with it. Okay. We need more than just protein. There is a reason that we need all of the things. Okay. Let the veggies be the most truly water first veggies most. And then more of the same, like Kate was mentioning, if you talk to people that are healthy, like most of the time we're eating really boring things, you guys, we're eating the same things over and over again. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. Occasionally I'll switch it up. I tend to be one. Um, and I don't know if you're this way, Kate, I tend to be one, like I eat the same things like until I get sick of them. And then I'm like, and now I need to switch it. <laughs> and then it'll be a really long time before I like bring them back in. Like I do that all the time and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I used to think, Oh, why well, this is so frustrating. And then I'm like, actually it's not, it's really smart. Like I, I know what I like and that's okay. Eat the same things, track what you're eating. You guys tracking is so important, especially, um, and this is a little more than just, you know, meal planning advice now, but tracking, if you have maybe a food intolerance and you can't figure out like, Oh my gosh, I, I'll, I'm bloated every evening or I'm feeling yucky. Track your food. <laughs> Seriously. You might be surprised at maybe what is triggering you to bloat or get really gassy or just feel upset. Or maybe you, um, feel anxious after you, it's amazing like how our food can affect our body. Um, for me, for example, salmon does not set well for me. Like I can't do salmon at all. It makes me very, very bloated. And I'm like, salmon's like your go-to healthy option, right? <laughs> like for so many people and it doesn't sit well with me. And had I not been tracking and watching what I was eating, I would have never discovered that. Um, don't buy the temptations. There is a joke in my house that like Oreos are not allowed. Like Truly, really, I have a bet going with my children. Like I have to pay them $20 if I buy a bag of Oreos and they can't encourage me to do so, or they have to pay me. Like it's this, it got to a point that I'm like, I, I can eat the entire bag. You guys, like it's, it's too much of a temptation for me. So if you have that temptation like that, and this is just being real with y'all, you know, I mean, Kate and I are not perfect. We have our temptations. Oreos are one of those for me. Like they are a no go. They have to be out of my house. Um, and then find the things that you can indulge on that are not food related. Do you like warm baths? Do you like taking time to read a book? Do you like taking time maybe to just scroll social media? Give yourself those indulgences instead of a food thing. We live in a society that truly is all about like, let's celebrate with food. Let's, you know, if we're upset, we eat food. Like everything's about food, right? Let's switch our mindset. And you, the thing is, you guys, especially if you have little kids, they're watching you, okay? <laughs> they are watching you. And if you're constantly like, you did a great job on your test, let's go get ice cream, which I'm not saying don't do that. You should do that occasionally, right? I mean, we all like those treats. But find those other things even for them that are non-food related. So they're not stuck in this process too that we tend to be in. Grocery shop online. Oh my gosh. Like who grocery shops online? It is amazing, especially if you have little kids. Uh, it's like sanity. <laughs> it's so nice. And you get away from those temptations. Kate had mentioned Shakeology earlier, you guys. Like Shakeology is... Uh, it's truly health in a cup, like, or a glass or whatever you put it in. Like, it is so awesome. It has probiotics in it. It is a good source of your macronutrients and all those micronutrients, your vitamins, your minerals, um, along with so many other things that fight off carcinogens, your adaptogens. I'm saying lots of gins, but trust me, it's like, I get a little nerdy when I talk about it. I love this stuff. It is so good. It has helped me become regular, which that might be a little bit too much TMI, but I was very much not before I implemented usually Shakeology daily in my life. It is awesome. We do have, like we mentioned, we are both certified in different nutrition programs. If you are really struggling and you're like, I cannot get a grip on this, you guys find a nutrition program. Okay. For example, right now I'm finishing up the ultimate reset. Um, you guys, I needed something to give me good guidelines of what I needed to do to get me back in track because I had gone so far off track because I let the life of just busyness get caught up with me. And now that I'm like three weeks into this program, almost completed it, I'm like, what was I thinking? How, why was I not doing all these things that I know to do, the meal planning and the prepping? It wasn't that I wasn't doing them. Um, sorry, my dog is barking now. Is that on the day? <laughs> um, it wasn't that I wasn't necessarily doing them. I wasn't doing them as efficiently or as thoroughly as I could have been. And the thing is, truly it is that planning to fail or fail to plan. Like you have to get those things down and get support. You guys get support. And I think that'll kind of lead into these next slides here. And I'm gonna pass this one over to Kate. You're muted. 
And then I muted myself to tell you you're muted. <laughs> Sorry, I was like on a roll too. No, um, you guys, this is, it's just so true. I actually just saw somebody post the other day. I think it was, well, it was today. It just feels like it was yesterday because kids. But um, you can do all of this on your own. You can. And you can be successful. There's people everywhere that are successful, but it is much more fun. And you have a group of women who support you and have tools and tips to do this with you um, via the boot camps and the groups that we do. Um, and if it wasn't for like the reason I'm a coach and I think Sindel too is because of that accountability. It's awesome. Let's see. So, um, we, let me, I always put my, okay. I can't see everything on the side. Um, we, one of the like big and most popular packages that we have for our boot camps are the Shakeology and Beachbody On Demand. If you're not familiar with what Beachbody On Demand is, it is literally every single workout program that Beachbody offers for an entire year. Um, and then you get Shakeology, 30 days of Shakeology um, with that, and it's $160. Shakeology regular is $130, so it's like a really good deal. <laughs> and I don't know about you, but when I lived in DC, um, and I don't know what gyms are here because I've never had a gym here. I've always had used Beachbody and in New York City, but I was in DC. I paid $150 for a gym each month. And I like, it's just crazy to me. Like that's every single month. And I know like um, bar studios, like that's like comparable per month. Um, but lit there's a bar program on here. It's just crazy. Um, it's a really good deal. Um, and I didn't get a chance to add to this slide, like everything that you get with it. Um, when you join our boot camps, um, Sindel's is the mom bod nation and mine is a busy girl boot camp. And if your coach is on here, they have their own boot camp. Um, but basically when you sign up with a boot camp, I always feel like it's helpful to know like what you're going to get. Um, and in, like the moment you sign up, obviously you're going to get these things, but when you join with a coach, um, at least a coach on our team, you get so much more. Um, number one, when you first join, there's a boot camp guide that we have created and customized for our boot camps. It's 30 plus pages. It's full of prep additional things beyond what's covered here. It helps you goal set. It just helps you get started. So you're going to get that goal setting guide. Um, you're also going to get meal plans um, each week. We have meal plans that we give to our clients. It gives you options um, as well as a grocery list that goes with it. Um, so that is also like a great way to find new recipes. And I actually recommend not doing all of them unless you're one of those people. But like, we give you options within there. Um, you're going to get added into a boot camp, which is off of social media. And I, we used to run these on social media, but now I'm like, this is the best thing ever to be off because I love social media because I use it um, to build a business for my family to support them. But I love being off of it because it stops me from like scrolling social media. So we now have an app. Um, it's the My Challenge Tracker app. And literally you log your workouts, you log your shakes. Um, and you get the accountability of your coach every single day. So, um, there's usually something that your coach is going to share in the morning to give you motivation and tips. And then some coaches do evening check-ins. There's just so many different like types of boot camps that we run, but you're in this place with this awesome community of women. Um, we have a virtual gym that you can show. You don't have to, but a lot of women like that accountability. It's scary right away. And then you realize it's like, it's just like this. Nobody's really looking. You're working out, right? Nobody's really looking at you, um, but they're working out. And you're like, and now I'm, I'm doing the 5 a.m. club with a few girls. And some of you are on here. And like, I need to know that there are other people up with me at 5 a.m. Because I don't want to be alone. And it gets me up and going. Um, so that accountability is awesome, which is all above and beyond 
what you're getting here with products, you get so much more with the community. Um, the value is priceless to me. I would pay way more than this um, for what I get, not from the, the product, right? It's awesome. Um, and the women are awesome. So we both have boot camps that you can join um, every single month. So check in with the coach that invited you to this. Um, but we would love to see you in a boot camp. Um, and there's other options too. If you're like, I want to try the go-go juice or the energize, like you can do energize and recover a post-workout. If you don't want to try Shakeology, there's lots of different options. And um, that kind of leads us into, and I'm going to hand it over to Sindel um, to talk about our giveaway. Thank you, Kate. Okay, guys. So like Kate mentioned, Bum, 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 which I had to walk away so I could go grab out my pantry. So tub of energize, you guys. This isn't just like the 10 packet sample that we've done for giveaways. This is a full tub. There's 40 servings in it. I should double check. I'm pretty sure it's 40. It's 40, yeah, right? It's 40. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't know if it's not on the front end, but I'm pretty sure it's 40. Okay, so this is a 40 serving container. You can do two scoops. You probably should only do one, but let's be real. Some days I do too. This stuff is amazing, you guys. And Kate kind of talked about it earlier. Just like if you need to clean your house, like this gives you good, clean energy. And it kills me when people are like, I want an energy drink. And I'm like, you're drinking a what? I mean, they're horrible for you. There's so much sugar in them. And then you have this horrible crash. This gives you like all the good stuff and caffeine wise, it's equivalent to, I think it's like a less than a half, less than like a regular cup of coffee. Um, you guys, like it's not a lot of caffeine. The caffeine that does come from here, it is from, um, I'm going to read the, the list here so I don't say I'm wrong, but it's from green tea and then the coffee bean extract. But the like really like amazing thing in this is corsetin. Corsetin is a flavonoid, which is also a phytonutrient. And it is what gives this the bright yellow color. So if you ever see Kate and I literally like dancing our butts off in the morning because we're excited to go do our workout because that is what this stuff does for you. Like you're actually excited to go and do it. You guys, the color comes from a natural source. It's not from a fake source. And if you see us drinking a pink drink, it's usually, it would be the fruit punch flavor of this, which they're coming out with a mixed berry in May, just an FYI for future reference. But the pink one, it's actually beets is what gives it the pink flavor and it causes the different, the different um, flavor in it. Like it's crazy. It, this is all natural. It's plant-based. It is so freaking good. So good. So this is the giveaway like Kate has written on here. We, what we want you to do. So this is the, the, how you do it, right? Okay. So you need to take a creative selfie. So right now, or we'll bring up the screen so you can see everybody. Um, take a creative selfie. There you go. Perfect. Take a creative selfie. You can take it back here, showing the screen. Um, you can talk about it, whatever, take a creative selfie and you're going to post it. Um, Oh, sorry. Do we need that slide for the posting? Did you guys, you, did you guys already write down who you need to tag? So you just need to tag Kate and I on Instagram um, or Facebook, whatever social media platform that you tend to use. You can do it in a post. You can do it in um, your story. Go ahead and tag us. So Kate, Emily Noble and Mom Bond Nation. If you guys got that written down and then we'll take a picture here in just a second here. Um, but go ahead and post it, tag us, and then tomorrow we will be announcing the winner. Sound good? Does that make sense for everybody? And when we end these calls, we always like to do a photo with everybody. So if you're on here, actually turn your